In this tutorial, we'll take a look at creating a table of contents in Adobe InDesign. You could technically do this by hand, by setting the text and adding in the numbers, but there's a much easier and more convenient way to do it. So to get started, let's take a look at paragraph styles, as they're required for this method. In a new document, go ahead and place some text down with the text tool. I'll simply click and drag to make a text box, and then type some example type in here. This is technically two paragraphs, as I have my text here on two separate lines. So next, let's style the text. We can do that via the Character panel and the Paragraph panel. We can find both of these panels under Window, Type in Tables. See, there they are, Character and Paragraph. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some style here to my text. I can change the font. I can change the size. I could add things like bold, italic, and I can change the alignment too. So once you're happy with how you've styled your text, let's go ahead and create a paragraph style. To open up the paragraph style panel, go to Window, Styles, Paragraph Styles to open it up. Next, I'll select the top line of text here. I'm just clicking and dragging to select it. When it's selected, click on the plus sign in the Paragraph Styles panel to create a new paragraph style. To further refine and edit our paragraph style, just double click to open up the paragraph style options. You'll see that we have a whole host of options here. We can do things like change the basic character formatting, tabs, and bullets. I highly recommend paging through these tabs and testing these options out to get familiar with them. Once you're happy with your selections, just click OK. Now let's use what we've learned to create a table of contents. Here's an example file that I'm going to use in this tutorial. It's a cookbook template that I made, and you can download it on Envato Elements if you'd like to work along with me or check it out. Otherwise, make sure you have a multi-page document that would be appropriate for a table of contents. So here's the table of contents in my cookbook design and InDesign automatically created it for me. First, we need a paragraph style that acts as a marker of sorts. InDesign needs to know where each table of contents section is. So for example, you could have the title of each chapter of your book as the same paragraph style and essentially use that as a marker. So in the case of my cookbook here, I decided to put this paragraph style down here in my footer. So every new recipe will have the title of the recipe here in the footer, just like this. Looking at my paragraph styles, notice here that there's one called Table of Contents. I created this especially to act as this marker for me. I need to make sure that every item that I want listed in the Table of Contents has this marker. So for example, let's look at another recipe here. See? Right down here I have the recipe name, and it's using that same Table of Contents paragraph style that I created. Again, this isn't the only way you could do this. You could make it an article title, for example, or a different part of your layout. This is just one possible scenario that you could use. Now, let's go to the page where we want our table of contents. I'm going to erase the table of contents that I already have here and create it all over again. So let's go to Layout, Table of Contents, to get started. This opens up our table of contents options, and there's a lot here to see. The TOC style up here can be used to access a table of contents style you've already created and saved. The title is for if you'd like your table of contents to have a title. You can leave it blank if you want to, but I decided to put in table of contents for mine. Style here refers to the style for our table of contents title. I created a style called contents title that I'd like to use here, so I'll select that. Now this section here is important. Style in the Table of Contents. This is what generates the content of our Table of Contents. So we need to select the style that we used earlier for our markers. So find this here in this list, then click Add to send it over to the left-hand side where it says Included Paragraph Styles. Now these here will be used to generate our Table of Contents. Let's click on More Options to view even more Table of Contents options we can customize. 
For my entry style, I'm going to use a style that I created called contents text. Again, this is a paragraph style. We went through creating paragraph styles earlier, so you can create as many as you'd like and then apply them here if you'd like to. I'd like my page numbers to appear after the entry, but you could change that right here. You can also give this content specific character styles if you'd like to, but I left those blank. Right here we have between entry and number, which determines what InDesign does between each item in your table of contents and the page number. Click on this little arrow here to view your options. This symbol here indicates that I opted for a right indent tab. There's even more options you could try here at the bottom of this panel, but make sure to keep an eye on numbered paragraphs. Here we could choose what's displayed. I went with include full paragraph because I want both the items and their page numbers, but you could also choose one or the other. Once you're happy with your selections, click OK to continue. And there you have it, our table of contents is made. Two additional tips here, however. I would avoid editing your table of contents by hand. If you add new pages, simply update your table of contents by going to Layout, Update Table of Contents. This will update the generated content here for you. Don't like how your table of contents looks? Again, you can use paragraph styles to your advantage. Remember earlier when I assigned paragraph styles to parts of my table of contents? Now I can go back to my Paragraph Styles panel and make changes. Let's double click on a style here to open one up. If I toggle Preview On, down here in the left hand side of this window, I can see my changes here in real time. Check it out. And there you have it. That's the basics of working with a table of contents. This can be particularly handy if you're working with a really large document and looking to save some time. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Good luck and happy designing!